श्री गुरुभ्यो नम Welcome everyone once again in this conversation on Ramayana in which we're discussing about Rama when Rama was expelled from his kingdom by the order of his father and the thing the idea behind his father's order was in the case his mother's idea and she asked him she asked for the boons and he granted her those boons and as a result of that rama is now being sent for the years uh, in forest uh, as a part of his exile and now when he goes for his exile years to complete to live his exile years in forest his brother and now his brother younger brother lakshmana is also on the way he is also He has also come up, and he says that I too with will go with my brother. How can I leave him alone when I have, uh, like, in Gurukul, when we were all together, we spent our childhood together, we spent every part, every obstacles of lives together, we enjoyed every happiness of our lives together. Now, when this. grave part of life has fallen and my brother how could i leave him alone so he too packs himself up and just um starts and makes his mind to leave the kingdom along with rama and there is a uh, describing lakshmana the sage is saying snehad vinaya sampanna sumitra nanda vardhana he is giving these two qualities of lakshmana number 1 Snehad he is the lover of his brother and while we speak about this word while we feel about this word sneha that means when you like someone when we appreciate someone how does this feeling come up how does does this feeling roll into ourselves only when we have devotion about something on someone only then likeness only then appreciation only then recognition of that thing appears in our body when we are devoted to it when we are dedicated to it when we like it only then we could like that thing that person when we are completely surrendered to it emotionally so lakshmana his younger brother is always surrendered to his brother in from his brother he is always thinks about the needs of his brother is the anyway he always feels he always thinks about all the things that could gladden his brother that's why this word is being said about him and the second word vinay sampanna he is he is a noble person he is full of nobility in him and this thing is the base of any human being this thing uh, the sage is saying in here that vinay sampanna so this holiness this holiness of a person this modesty of a person these qualities when we are holy when we are we are pure and we have modesty in us then we can uh, i mean we can win anything in this world when we slouch our ego before anyone before this nature in front of this nature and feel our entire uh, existence with politeness only then the people would start appreciating us and not for getting appreciation of people that we should mm, uh, we should undermine our ego it's our nature it's our work to do ego cannot take us anywhere it's like a sweet fire it's like a coal fire that degrades us from everywhere so this ego thing this we should never put our hands into ego and what we do we submit ourselves entirely we surrender ourselves entirely in this ego thing and we burn every day this ego anger hatred this all these qualities all these bad things that we have erased in us that we have cultivated in us all these things are fire all these things are sweet fires these all are these things are uh, like of coal fires which burn us every day and we let ourselves 
to be burned by these things, by these ill uh, thoughts, by these ill emotions, by these ill feelings. And so, what is the way? This is the way that the scripture describes. Describing the qualities of uh, Sri Rama and all of his belongings, all uh, the memories, any character in this scripture, whenever any character is described in the scripture, that is not just uh, that is not just limited to that character. It carries a divine knowledge. It carries a divine teaching that the sage tries to convey to us, that the sage tries to transmit to us. And when we decode those teachings in a proper manner. Only then would be able to understand the importance of the scriptures. And this scripture really has its importance only when we are understanding it, only when we are appreciating it, and only when we are applying its teaching in our lives. Learning from this, it's not only a scripture, it's also a, a glorious history of India. How India was like, how this entire eye of it that uh, the name of India prior to the name given to it, India afterwards. It was Iowa. How it was like? What were the rules? What were the regulations? What was the life of people like during that era? And we call ourselves Aryas. How could we turn ourselves the people uh, that could be uh, compared to the people in that era? We say that those era people were very religious, were very, were very uh, emotion, uh, were filled with good emotions, good actions, and never indulged in wrong actions, never indulged in bad actions, inactions. So, how to gain this life? This scripture narrates us the entire history of that era. It's not just a story. It's not a story. It's a history. It's a divine history, and along with history, it not only gives us information, it gives us divine teachings. Maintaining the life of Sri Rama and all of the characters that we see in here. Everyone has divinity in him, and wherever we see these divine things, these divine feelings uh, presented by the scripture to us, we should at once, right then and there, accept it. That is the utility of the scripture. This is the utility of us learning the scripture, understanding the scripture, hearing the scripture, and speaking the scripture. It's for everyone, not just people who are uh, listening. It's for the person who is saying, like me, and also for the person who is understanding, who is listening. Like, as I said in my previous conversations, if the person who is picking the scripture is not following the scripture, how would his words become powerful enough to influence other people? Our lives are examples. My life, everyone's life is an example, is a true motivator. When anyone, anyone just motivates people by his speech and never lives the good life and never lives a pure life, his motivation would do no change in society. His inspiration would do no change, not even the minuscule change in the, in the community and let alone this country and world. So this scripture teaches us that everyone, every part of this community has the responsibility as a human being to change itself and this is the utility of this scripture. Wherever it is, whoever the person is that is speaker or uh, spectator, listener, the person who is listening it or speaking it, whoever it is, it's our duty, it's our job. And this was the uh, description of Sri Rama, and it is said that uh, Sri Lakshmana, and he is these two qualities. These two great qualities are described about him. And then the sage, the narrator, is moving forward towards the next part of the trio, and that is Masita. These three people, these three entities, move towards forest. Only Rama was ordered to spend his uh, 14 years of his life in exile in forest. But Along with him, Sri Lakshmana and Masita also go to forest, and that's why the speaker, the narrator, 
Sage Valmiki is uh, giving a description of those characters. He described Sri Lakshmi and now uh, the description of uh, Masita. And there are a couple of qualities that he describes. First, he says Janaka Sekule Jata. She was the daughter, they were the daughter of uh, Janaka. And as there is a folklore in Indian society that they, Masita was the uh, daughter of Earth. She was not the daughter of Earth. Many times it happens that a person who is always angry, we consider him as fire. A person who is very beautiful, we consider him like sun, uh, like moon. Okay? He is very like uh, fair by his skin, whitey skin, so we compare radiant skin, <laughs> so we compare him to be like moon, we say, and we use different types of figures of speech, like simile and metaphor. He is like a moon, he is a moon, so whatever we say that there, that the same thing is happening here. The way we describe Masita as the daughter of uh, Earth, that is figuratively described, that is an mm, analogical description of Masita. Actually, uh, she has a great patience in herself. And as I said in my previous conversations, that we should have a patience like Earth, we should have speed like air. So resembling her character uh, like uh, with Earth, which is Patience, that's why she was called the daughter of Earth. She was called the embodiment of uh, Earth or whatever. So that's why she is uh, narrated uh, as the daughter of Earth and nothing uh, extra is there. Okay, so here, here comes the proof from this scripture. I also said that this is a history of that period. And history never speaks lie, and especially when a sage is narrating that history, divinic history. So here, in clear words, it has been written that she was the daughter of Janaka. Her father's name was Janaka, and she was the daughter of Janaka, and that's why she is called Janaki. And in the next line, the sage is saying, uh, Deva Mayeva Nirmita. From outside, she was a woman, okay? But from inside, she had, I mean, they had all the qualities, all divine qualities accumulated in them. All divine powers. Only then could a person, only then a person could become such a person that we idolize them even today. That we read them even today. Only then a person could become worth reading, worth listening, worth uh, his life could become such a life that millions and millions of people, even today, are on the way, always uh, on the way to follow their lives. They um, make everyone consider Masita as the epitome of how a woman should be. They are the culmination of motherhood. They are the culmination of nourishment, of uh, maintaining the balance in the society. So only then a person could become a real idol, a true center of any scripture. And here, by the qualities of Masita, we could understand, easily decipher that why they are very highly regarded even today in, in society. That Deva Mayiva Nirmita and this divine property in any human being doesn't just come just spontaneously. Never, never it comes spontaneously. Any work, anything that we see in a person that is never spontaneous. Every person in this world is a different person. He has different tastes of his life. He has different actions. He performs, every person is performing his action in a different manner. Every person likes something different. Every person is tending towards different things. There is diversity in nature. And why is it so? It's only because of our actions that we created in our previous births that we got this life. Wherever we are standing today is the result of our millions and millions of uh, births that we took before. 
and this is a great proof that the rebirth occurs. Otherwise, every person would have been equal person. Some person has gained musical abilities, some person has gained educational abilities, some person has gained just abilities to speak, some person has gotten uh, abilities to paint. Every person has different abilities, uh, different potential in him. And this, this, all these things cannot happen spontaneously, just by any way. No, it's all the result of whatever we did in our previous lives, previous births. So wherever we are standing today is the result of whatever we did. And that's why uh, it's also a thing from this word, from this sentence, we also gain the knowledge that from today, at least from today onwards, we start living a divine life, living a great life so that our next life becomes a peaceful life, an uplifted life, an awakened life. And when I say our life should be uplifted, our life should be awakened, that doesn't only mean that a spiritual seeker should achieve these lives. We'd be the listeners, the people who are listening to me right now could be feeling, okay, he is saying that we should be awakened, we should be uplifted. Okay, this is essential pe for people who are who are seeking spiritual life like him. No, it's everywhere required. Because when you are an awakened person, when you are an uplifted person, you would do every work thinking in mind, taking in mind that my work never degrades the balance of this nature, never degrades the humane behaviors of this nature. When you have this thing in your mind, when you have this feeling in your mind, then whatever you do becomes a help for the society rather than uh, degrading the society, rather than um, pulverizing the society, the rules and regulations of the society. So you become a better person, you become a better caretaker of not only your family but the entire human uh, culture on this society and why to say human culture, entire ecosystem around you. So it is equally necessary for a materialistic person as it is for a spiritual person and speaking directly, speaking the truth, no one is a materialistic person. Everyone, every single part of this society, every single person of this society is a, is a spiritual person because that is the ultimate purpose of our lives. That is the ultimate destiny of our lives. That's why we're human beings because we have the power to think, we have the power to uh, understand the feelings of others and to behave and vice versa. So this was the divinity of Masita where I was picking Deva Mayeva Nirmita. So he, she has, I mean they have all these divinity qualities in them and from here we we gain this knowledge that we too have these divinity qualities. This is not just description. This is an inspiration. It inspires everyone that everyone can achieve these divinity qualities on this earth. These great men, these great entities lived on this earth and they uplifted their abilities, they uplifted their divinity abilities so much that we pray to them even today. So every person, this scripture, this narration, of everyone's character gives us an inspiration, a motivation, a right motivation. Today we just rush towards motivations here and there. These scriptures are the greatest motivations for everyone. These divinic things, they have no trash in them. They have no any bad principles in them. So when we study the lives of these great people, we get inspired and this is a true inspiration. Every person can uplift the good qualities that are in him. Every person, in fact, that is the purpose of our life to spark, to kindle our good qualities and to degrade, to just uh, wipe away all those bad qualities that we have amassed in us. And the next line, the sage is describing uh, Masita as, by saying, Sarva Lakshana Sampanna, all sorts of divine qualities she has. She possesses all sorts of divine qualities, whether it be the quality of patience, whether it be the quality of working hard, whether it be the quality of taking care of others, 
whatever qualities that could be seen in a woman, Masita has all of those qualities, and that's why Masita excels uh, every human being on this nature. She developed all these qualities that are greater in nature, that help nature, that nourish nature, and that raise nature. Narinam Uttamavadhu, she is uh, the top, she is the uh, uh, for sort of fruition of all women. She is an exemplar of how a woman should be. That's how we could understand. From their life, uh, we could understand that how a life should be, how living should be. And when we read uh, their life, the lives of such people like Masita, we understand one thing, that always devote your lives for the welfare of others. A person who thinks for himself first can never serve the society. To serve the society, you are requested, you are advised, you are suggested to take care of others first. And that doesn't mean that you don't take care of yourselves, but this is a process that works just like that. So when you are in service, when you are serving people, so your first and foremost uh, work should be, part should be to take care of those people and we understand it from this uh, life, from the lives of these great people. And also one thing that we see that uh, difficulties, obstacles, hurdles appear in everyone's lives. That doesn't mean that we fly away from them. These people that we are studying today, they face the most difficult life that we could ever imagine, that we could ever consider. But they traverse that uh, whatever uh, bad things that appear in their lives. And thus, these people, these great entities became an example to this entire world. And that's why we say Masita as she was the Narinam Uttamavadhu. That's why the sage uh, is describing her as a great woman. And it gives us a teaching that whatever uh, obstacle, whatever huddle that appears in our lives, that's a look. We can understand a huddle as an obstacle equally on the same time a brave person, a, a positive person takes it another way. He feels it as an opportunity. And when we receive, when we grab huddles as opportunities, those become, those huddles, those obstacles become a lever to uplift our good properties, good behaviors, good life. So this is on us how we take this life, how we lead this life. And for leading such kind of life, we need to take, mm, take shelter of something. And this, no other shelter could be as elaborate, as decorated as this scripture, these scriptures, Vedic scriptures. So always um, take some time, look, we every day we give ourselves sometimes doing different works. We could also give this time. Time is uh, stretchable, like a, a rubber band. So when you take some time to read these things, understanding the lives of great men, that we great entities that we pray today, then it's not only just reading them, it's inspiring yourself, feeling yourself with positivity. And when you are filled with good characters, good properties, then everyone, when every person does this, every entity does this, every part of this community does this, then this community, this society as a whole, this country and this world as a whole would become a better place. There is no, um, there is no huddle in that, there is no no in that. So you take care of yourselves and help everyone uh, build a better society, build a better community, build a better world. Thank you.